In this video, I wanna share with you my trades on a rather special day. The day when I was up $15,000 at one point, but then I totally messed up, not just once, but twice, to eventually give back basically everything, all the profits on the day. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm still a little bit upset, the same way I felt when my ex-husband took half of my bank account. I understand that the profits and losses might be the exciting part. However, I hope you guys can benefit from these key lessons from this video, which are my gap up long strategy on Nvidia stock after earnings, how I analyze the earnings results and plan for this trade, the big mistakes I made on this trading day that resulted in losing $15,000. Don't forget to smash the like button if you want to see more trading videos like this. And as always, you should take note and ask me any questions you have in the comment section below. Now let's get started. The first trade we want to focus on is Nvidia. We are talking about this particular day over here, which is the third day after the earnings report. If you recall from NVIDIA earnings, CEO talked a lot about the buzzword AI. I believe the word artificial intelligence was used over 100 times during the conference call. But they had some solid growth in all of the sectors year over year, and their guidance for the next quarter, I think I believe was like 30 to 50% growth, depending on different sector. So that's why the stock gapped up huge. We're talking about from $300 to the next day to over 380. And the reason we need to understand why Nvidia stock in particular had so much momentum and so much gap up is so we can trade it accordingly with the right strategies. If you recall from a lot of my YouTube videos, I trade a lot of these overnight gap ups or even gap downs. And on this particular day, we're talking about a huge gap down from prior day's close of 389. So you can see 389 down here, this is a prior day's close all the way to the next day over $400, over 409 to 420s. And for Nvidia, the biggest key level I'm looking at is this pre-market highs of 408. That's gonna be the key level. Remember that for later on in the video when I break down the strategy. And remember, in the stock market, a rising tide lifts all boats. So you can see a lot of other stocks that are in the similar artificial intelligence sector or that kind of involved in that business also gapped up with Nvidia. A good example is Palantir. This is also one I traded later on, I'll show you. Um, the stock also gapped up with Nvidia. Um, prior days closed, 1380s, gapped up over the way to 1480s and went to $15 on that day. I'm also gonna show you my trade on this one. I actually lost on this trade. One more is AMD. This is probably the one that investors are thinking is the closest thing to Nvidia. Um, it's trading only at over $100. So you can see this thing also gapped up huge to 130s overnight from prior day's close of 127 with Nvidia. I've made several videos on how to find the right kind of stocks to trade. If you want to learn more in depth about my daily trade planning process, then comment pre-market down below and I'll reply you and send you a video on my 5 a.m. morning routine. Now back to Nvidia here. With a key level of 409, this is where I will go and join the trend. Because remember, it's at an all-time high. So once again, if the stock is able to break above pre-market highs, which is this 409, 410 mark, then it has upside to 420s. And I wanna join the trend or even buy the breakout to go long. The second option is, with such a huge gap up, a lot of times you see profit taking on the gap up. So if the stock profit takes and sells off, I wanna go long around the pre-market um, support area around $400. That'll be the area where I'll dip by or go long on the reversal move. Okay, so this is about seven minutes into the market open at 9.37. You can see that I already realized $8,500 on the day because I had the swing trade over the weekend. I believe this was a Monday. I had the swing trade over the weekend and I sold them into the pre-market highs at around, this is a what, 403s. So that's a nice little profit to wake up on the day. 
I don't swing trade that much anymore, but when I see a very good opportunities where all the technicals and the fundamentals and the sector hype in this case lines up, then I'll take the swing trade. Sometimes I'll even swing it for multiple days or multiple weeks. And since artificial intelligence is a hype sector right now, that's where I'm more bullish. All right, so back to the recording. I am now, you can see, I'm watching an AMD on the bottom here. AMD is a stock earlier where I said that um, it's all gapped up with NVIDIA, so it's a follower of the hype. Um, NVIDIA will be considered the leader of the pack, and AMD will be one of the followers. So you can see me trying to buy the dip at 128 on AMD. Starter with 1,000 shares. And that's it. So my goal is I want to see this dip to start holding up for a reversal. But if it keeps on making lower lows, then I want to cut my losses and move on. At the same time, you can see I also got in on NVIDIA 500 shares at one, uh, 408. And the idea is that if it gets over that 409, 410 key level, I want to add into it and join the breakout and join the trend to the upside. So you can see NVIDIA on the top is testing 409s and AMD at the bottom is also struggling to hold that 128 mark. And my style of trading is if I get into a starter, I would just sit here and watch how it reacts. And depending on the price action, I'll add into a position or I'll get out for a loss on the starter size. So you can see at the bottom, AMD definitely looks a lot weaker than NVIDIA. NVIDIA is breaking through the higher day um, right now, or at least testing that pre-market highs. AMD is just very, very weak. So fast forward now, you can see 409 that's being tested right now on NVIDIA. It's very interesting because the leader of the pack is extremely strong as it should be, but AMD and I believe at the time Palantir, they were extremely weak. So I still have my original positions, 1,000 shares AMD, 500 on NVIDIA. So I haven't added into anything yet. You can see on NVIDIA, it's testing that 409s. I'm looking to add into that um, because that's the confirmation we talked about earlier during the trade planning process. So you can see I'm trying to add 500 shares to NVIDIA now I have a 1,000 shares with an average of 408.79. And note, I did not add into AMD because I don't like the fact that it's not following the leader of the pack. So great, NVIDIA is working out for 10s. AMD, it seems like if you look at the price, uh, well, the candles down here, it seems like it's consolidating that 108. So we'll see. I want to let it prove to me that it deserves to be added. I want to see it right before I add. So I think that's a concept that a lot of new traders and a lot of traders who's struggling, they don't understand, is that they add to losers. So in this scenario, they'll be adding to AMD and not add into NVIDIA. If you want to succeed as a trader, you should do the opposite. You want to add into winners like NVIDIA right now that's breaking through highs and extremely strong. And you want to avoid adding into the loser, which is AMD. AMD is starting to bounce a little bit, which is good, but it still hasn't shown me the strength I want to see. I want to see the stock above VWAP. So if you look at this AMD chart, so VWAP right now on AMD is 129.40s. So essentially, I want to see the stock get over that level, consolidate, and it'll add into it. Until then, I'm not adding. Uh, but NVIDIA has already confirmed over the pre-market highs of 410s, and now we're testing 411s. You can see I'm realized I'm up about um, 2,600 on Nvidia and uh, only about like $10 on AMD. Nvidia crazy action testing for four twelves, and you can see at the very bottom AMD is doing the opposite direction. Remember, add into winners, don't add into losers. If anything, I should be getting out of AMD right now. So you can see I just stopped off AMD at 127.60s. This is my starter. I never add into it. So I just cut it. It's not working. Don't don't like try to make it work. Okay, you cannot fight the stock to make it go your way. 
So you can see I sold a little bit, 300 shares for 12s into Nvidia. So I locked in additional about $1,000. I'm up about $8,500 on the day. And that's after the loss on AMD. So I'm really trying to let the stock work. In this case, the winner is um, Nvidia at 412, but I really want to see if it's going to test that 418, 420s mark. That'll be my ultimate price target. You can see the big difference here. Nvidia, leader of AI, extremely strong. AMD, while it's in also part of the hype sector, it's just barely bouncing at all. So. You know, it could be, you know, there's too, too much overnight gap. It could be profit taking. All of those things are possible, I'm sure. But it doesn't matter. You want to make sure if you're wrong, just get out. Okay, if you look at how long you're staying in the stocks, in the trades you're taking, you want to be staying in the winners at least three times longer than your losers. So no regrets on AMD. I lost, I cut it. I'm really glad I did because you can see it's going even lower right now. And in the grand scheme of things, a thousand dollars loss isn't that bad for me at all on AMD. So fast forward a little bit. Nvidia is at four fourteen. That's a huge move. You can see down there. I'm still holding the five seven hundred shares. I'm realized three thousand dollars. If I just realize it, I'll be up like eleven thousand dollars on the day. But I'm trying to let a trade work. There's also a fine line between letting your winners work versus taking profit on the way up. So in this scenario, you're gonna see soon, um, I ended up being too patient on the trade. So you can see while I'm letting Nvidia on the top work, still holding the 700 shares, I'm looking at Palantir, which, you know, remember that key level for me is 1480s. The stock never tested that just yet, but I wanna see, it does look like it's reclaiming VWAP, and trying to go higher. Ooh, fast forward here, you can see AMD going from green to red. Had I kept holding that 1,000 shares, I'd be down, I think $3,000 on AMD. So remember, you wanna get to that point where you're really good at risk management and you feel good about cutting your losers. I lost $1,000 on AMD, it sucks. But I could have lost even more if I don't stop out, right? You want to start thinking about your trade management and risk management this way. Fast forward a little bit more. I'm still watching Nvidia, letting it work. You can see it's testing a higher day, 415s once again. I'm up $4,700, almost five grand. Oh, and my dumbass still didn't take the profit. Oh my God. So yeah, if I realize this will be a nice, what, 14K on the day, 13K on the day, doesn't matter at this point. And pattern tier, you can see it's on the top here, testing that key level, 1480s. I'm definitely eyeing that for um, a long. I think with Palantir, I was a little bit more conservative and you're gonna see in the share sizes I take, etc. because if you look at a daily chart, this thing has been up for multiple days, um, which is very different from Nvidia, in which Nvidia had a catalyst, it's been up for the third day, but it's not like Palantir where it came from, I think like 11 or $12. You can see it came from single digits just about two weeks ago, and since then it's had multiple breakout days. So to me, it just seems a little bit extended. So that's the reason I was a little bit more conservative with Palantir. Um, and Nvidia is reaching 417. I'm up, I'm realized $6,000 on the day. But once again, spoilers, I'm about to lose all that Nvidia profit. So I took a starter on Palantir at 1480s. You can see I only have 500 shares. This is a very, very small starter on um, Palantir because once again, I think it's a little bit too extended. So I wanna play it conservatively. You can see Nvidia reaching 418s. I really should you know, take some profit. You can see I'm I hit up a sale of 300 shares at 420s. Um, but uh, you know, really should have just taken some at 418. You can see below Nvidia is testing that 419s right now. 418.90s, 419s right now. So we're literally like 70 cents away from 420. 
And around that 419 mark is where you see it hit a wall. What that means in trading is that you see that it breaks out through that 419 for a split second. You can see right here, it printed through that 419. That's a huge short squeeze as well. You can see it printed through 419 for a split second. It went as high to 419.20s. And after that, you're gonna see it rejected hard into that breakout. So I was too slow. I should have sold into that 419s or even sell something to 418s, but um, you can see a harsh rejection. 419 and right back down to 417. So this is a kind of price action that you need to start noticing. I wasn't really necessarily looking at level two or the tape, but I'm looking at the candlestick price action. So I'm glad I sold some at 418 or something like that. I sold 300 shares. So um, I have about 500 shares left at 408. And you can see I locked in $11,000 on Nvidia. And like if I locked it in, I'll be up 15,000 on the day. You can see once that 419 rejected hard, we're having trouble holding the previous breakout levels at 416, 417 on Nvidia. And this is what you need to know about trading these sector moves. Nvidia being the leader in this AI overnight gap up, once it starts tanking, which it's starting to do right now, it's gonna take down all the followers with it. So we're talking about AMD, AI, the stock AI, Palantir as well. So that's a huge rejection. So uh, I think I was definitely too patient on this final position, 408. I, I really should have just locked it in. So fast forward to Palantir, you can see it's breaking down that 1480s mark. But the good thing is I only have 500 shares, very, very small starter size on Palantir. So, um, so if that happens, I'm gonna sell it. Nvidia, um, you can see big pullback to underneath that 412. You know, you don't see me placing a stop in the market for break even. In hindsight, I really wish I did. Uh, but once again, everything is clear in hindsight, especially in trading. So yeah, you can see it's breaking down four oh four tens that VWAP area. So I went from being unrealized up, I think like four or five grand to now only being up a thousand dollars. So as you can see, as Nvidia is kind of selling off, that's also dragging down another stock such as Palantir because this is the follower, right? So you can see I'm down about 20 cents on the stock from 1480s down to 1460s. So definitely not liking this action. Yeah, it's really weak. So I'm just, you can see, I just click bid and try to get out. And I got out for a 30 cent loss at 1450s. So I lost about $124 on Palantir on the long. Now my focus is just on Nvidia. Once again, I have no regrets on taking the Palantir and AMD trade, and uh, I lost on both of them, but I have no regrets because I had starters in, and then I, when it doesn't work, I just get out right away. I didn't add to a loser, I didn't try to make it work, or say stuff like, oh, it has to, it has to go my way, it has to bounce at VWAP or at the low of the day. No, this, the stock really doesn't have to bounce. Now I just wish I practiced the same discipline on a stock like Nvidia and uh, set the stop at least break even. If you're enjoying the video so far and you appreciate the transparency with the profits, the losses, and the stupid mistakes I'm making, please remember to drop a like down below. I really appreciate it. So fast forward here, the stock is staying very heavy below VWAP. Over here, you can see it's testing that 409s, trying to bounce. I'm still holding at 500 shares, holding on to that hope, hoping that the stock will go back up. Um, but yeah, holding hope uh, is not a strategy. So yeah, you can see it's going red now on Nvidia. And you can see I'm trying to stop out. I think I really should have used um, a market stop just to stop me out altogether. So I didn't have to like, I wouldn't need to like manually click and stop out. But again, I'm not gonna lie. I'm getting a little frustrated watching this. I was up 15,000. Now I'm down like negative $1,000 on this trade. And you can see I got out at 407. So I lost like unrealized $500. So yeah, started giving back some profits on this trade on Nvidia. 
Um, so I realized about ten thousand dollars on this trade so far, but spoilers, it, it became a lot less later on. So I wanna fast forward a little bit to talk about the secondary trades I took. So you can see I stopped out here earlier at around like 407s. I got back in long and added over 411s on Nvidia, which is, you know, in hindsight, a decent entry. But my mistake is that you're gonna see once again, I clearly did not learn from my previous mistake. So I have a 800 shares at 410 average, which is pretty decent um, considering that the stock went all the way back down. But my goal on Nvidia is to sell into the breakout, um, into that 414, 416. So fast forward, you can see it's breaking out now, testing that 414. I'm up, you know, nice little like $2,500 on the day. Um, so in a way, you know, this is my second chance to make this trade work. But uh, spoilers, again, I'm about to make the same mistake. So fast forwarding here, you can see um, it's rejecting that 414s and having trouble with 413s area here. I'm trying to be patient and let both of these trades work. But once again, there's a balance between being patient and letting your winners work out and remembering to sell into the breakout and take profit. In this scenario, I really didn't do the take profit part um, properly. So fast forward now, you can see I went red on AMD trade and uh, you know, Nvidia, I went red as well. So I stopped out at AMD, gave back another thousand dollars and Nvidia, I believe I'm about to give back some more profits as well. I think psychologically, I was definitely affected. I was up 15,000 and now I only have $8,000 left. Okay, fast forward now, you can see it's breaking down that VWAP once again. Um, and that's where I stopped out. So, so yeah, so I was up $15,000 and now I'm basically down to like $7,800. So not gonna lie, it's pretty frustrating. So as you can see, I'm ending the day with around 65 or $6,700 realized gains. Now I know myself really well is that if I was up really nicely on a day and I start giving back, um, I start revenge trading and trying to make back those profits and trying to go back to that $15,000 mark. So I was self-aware enough to stop trading on a day. Yes, I know it sucks. It could have been a $15,000 day. That was more than what my two months paycheck when I was in my nine to seven job. But you have to think about the bright side. I still realized $6,500 on a day. That's still amazing for one day's work. So instead of trying to go back and make back those losses and you know try to go back from 6,000 to 15,000, I just stopped and I wanna make sure I com I'm stay composed and stay calm and be able to trade again another day. That's a really important lesson I hope you learned from my mistakes today. Traders and especially beginners, they always focus on finding a strategy to try to make profit as soon as possible, but they fail to learn risk management and learning to protect their profits. So they'll make some quick money and lose it all even faster. And by no means am I saying I'm perfect. You can see from the video earlier, I certainly gave back more than I had wanted. From $15,000 down to 10,000, down to nine, eight, and then six. And yes, I was definitely frustrated. I still am watching this video today. But remember, as traders, our goal is not to trade and profit for just today, for one day, but to stay profitable in the long term. So if it means making only $6,000 today and I'll live to survive and trade another day and many more months and years to come, yes, I will take it. So hopefully you learned from my deadly and costly mistakes today. Remember, number one, always let your winners run and cut your losers fast. Number two, there's a balance between letting your winners run and taking profits. You wanna make sure you're locking in profits on the way up and use trailing stop or in the money stops if necessary. 
Number three, yes, it sucks to be giving back profits, but you should realize that when you are starting to trade emotionally or over trading and stop yourself and end green on the day, doesn't matter whether it's six thousand or a hundred dollars. You wanna make sure you're living to trade another day instead of revenge trading and uh, going to worse, going from green to red and lose money. You can check out my live trading video playlist over there for more detailed trade analysis and price action commentaries. And if you're interested in learning more about how I trade and my trading strategies, you can check out the Humble Trader community down below. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. I'm the Humble Trader and I'll see you guys next time.